So, uh, hi, congratulations on scoring a, a 740. It was, it's an incredible Thank improvement uh, that you've Thank had on you. the verbal. So, V25 to V38 and quant also you improved from Q50 to Q51. Uh, I amaze myself too. So, I actually, I'm kind of consistently on 50, but 51. I actually scored 100% all questions. Yes. Um, it's a surprise <laughs> too no, for me. I, I think it's when, when you think about Q50 and Q51, it's it's very dependent on, on, on how you're performing that day. A couple of careless mistakes, you can get to a Q50. That's true. Uh, that's true. And, yeah, and, that's and so true. if it's a good day, you get to that Q51. And, 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 and I think yeah. that, that does give your score that boost. But let's talk about your yeah. verbal score. So you, you gave your first attempt <clears throat> on 19th of, oh no, on 17th of July, you scored a 630. Uh, with yeah. a 630 with a verbal score of 25. And, 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 and so how did you study for your first attempt? Or on the first, were you expecting a 630? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so I actually officially started my GMAT journey in um, exactly around this time last year in um, 2016. Mm -hmm. So I mostly, you know, uh, read all the books that usually um, recommended on the internet mm. um, and um, I study on my own like sometimes on off on off like sometimes mm. even one week or two weeks I mm. didn't touch the book at all mm. and um, but then starting from March <clears throat> from uh, from March yeah mm. from March I start intensively mm -hmm. and um, but I still um, stick to the same habit of studying. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not paying much attention, to be honest, and much, and not, and didn't pay much attention to a wrong answers, um, for like especially in sentence correction. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, all three sections in the verbal. So when I make a sentence right, I didn't bother checking back into why it's right or and why is the order that's wrong. So mm -hmm. I think to me, I think it's a wrong approach. And um, coming to the exam, so um, I, I think that I, I am for some somewhere between six seventy or six eighty. Mm -hmm. But when it comes out six thirty, I feel disheartened a little bit. And uh, but I think that um, that score reflect my true performance. Mm -hmm. It's not like something bad luck or something. So. I seriously have to look back at how I studied so far and um, mm. and what I should improve. So, uh, so I, I come up with a plan and then this time I pay much more attention to the strategy that I should change and, mm -hmm. and uh, how I should approach the new way of studying. Otherwise, I'm going to fall back to the, the old track and, and, and not improve myself. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Actually, my wife did help me a lot on uh, okay. on persuading me to to um, take course in Ijima. Actually, she did persuade me. How like, come? Hi, you you have to take it. <laughs> I, I so, should. Um, she, so, so, what did she do? Uh, she, she she actually read some reviews and um, mm. she read some reviews and um, you know uh, do some research on the internet and then she say. Because she, she kind of know that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good at studying on my own, mm -hmm. um, I, but I actually have a tutor as well. Uh, it mm -hmm. also helps, um, but it doesn't mean that um, Ijimat didn't contribute. It actually, Ijimat helped me a lot. And um, when I when I start, I I start with um, sentence correction first, mm -hmm. and um, you guys rock at sentence correction. I have to say that. So um, I pay literally like details of everything you said on on the um, on the lectures mm -hmm. on the video lectures and uh, I attended the um, uh, the live sessions mm -hmm. the, the, the live session, I, yes. I think the, you know the, the the good thing about live session is before coming to the live sessions I thought that I think I'm good enough already for a live mm -hmm. sessions like why should I attend the live session? Mm -hmm. But then when I came to the live sessions, it surprised me and it amazed me about how in depth that I could dig into some particular topic. 
and uh, they brought so many insights into some particular topics, and um, mm. I enhanced my understanding about that. So I think live session is definitely helpful. Um, and then I, I changed the way I approach a sentence question that, mm -hmm. um, like how I should study the wrong answers and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep a note for myself, uh, which is, which that, uh, which is, I didn't do it at, at like, at my first attempt. Mm -hmm. So, um, I keep a note, I note now every, um, so usually I think the sentence question, they have kind of, um, 80 or 90 percent is going to fall into some standard structure mm -hmm. but there are some certain strange structures it mm -hmm. just happens and show up in one or two sentence mm -hmm. in the whole I think in, in the whole pool of questions so mm -hmm. i keep a note for myself that i i know that the only way i can kill it is by learn by heart like that kind of usage mm -hmm. of grammar is acceptable mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in Jimat. so i keep a uh, that note and you know go back and forth or the lecture notes and the mm -hmm. videos and and um and that is the sentence correction the reading comprehension um the rc i like the way um Jimat approach um passage mm -hmm. so uh, the most important takeaway uh, message about reading a mess a passage for me is after reading a paragraph I have to write around three four or five words about that particular sentence oh mm -hmm. sorry about that particular paragraph, um, paragraph yeah what it say mm -hmm. even though they don't have like a, a change in the voice or it usually it's easy if we can detect some however but yet something like that like some big idea change transition but some paragraphs they don't have that words but it, it just keep continue continue to develop the the previous ideas but at least i need to write now mm -hmm. four five words mm -hmm. what that paragraph's about to I, th I think that's good in order like to grab the the main idea of the home passage mm -hmm. and the second is i i didn't realize that it keep me engaging into the yes. the passage yes yeah so i, I think that's important <laughs> i still remember uh um one of the key thing is you know keep yourself engaged into the passage so i think that's important yes um, and that's you know it's important not only um, uh, uh, because you want to do well on the GMAT, but now as you go into a certain business school, you will be reading cases, and a typical case is about 12 pages long. And, and, and the same thing is important over there too. On most days, you will get about 20 minutes to read that 12 page long document. That's really important. And, and then you'll have uh, uh, illustrations in the, in, in, with, with data and tables in the back. And you'll have, you know, another 20 minutes to analyze that. And, and so which means you can only read that case just once. And if you want to be able to understand what they're trying to really say, it's important to follow the same process. You read a paragraph and you summarize it. You read a paragraph, summarize four or five words, and then you go forward. Because then the second read you, is, 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 is only about one minute. Yeah. But we, yeah. you only read those five words. You don't really read the entire thing. And, 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 and you need that second read because when you're looking at the data in the, in the appendix over there, uh, you, you, you're able to then really say, okay, this is what he said, this is the data, this is what he said, this is the data. And, 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 and so essentially these are the same habits that, uh, that become very useful when you get into business school and then post business school and in business life as well. So um, yeah. these are good habits that you need to, to, to really inculcate uh, overall. But, but I'm glad that you did that and, and you know, that, that's very good. You also use Scholaranium quite extensively. You, you, you basically solve 500 odd questions in Scholaranium. I noticed that. So the Yeah, I, I love that session. I love that session. Um, it's, it's perfectly stimulates the test. Mm. So um, uh, for some few attempts, at first, like, um, it's, it, it's good in a way that it, it helped me to manage time Mm -hmm. okay. And um, and create 
you know, stimulate a similar pressure of the test. <laughs> okay, that is that is good. And at first, I I scored poorly mm -hmm. on the on, on on that on that practice, but I I think I get improved. Um, you know, as long as practice and you know how to practice. And also, I think the solutions help a lot because the the detail that is there in the solutions in Scholaridium they really point out where you made a mistake, and then as you take more quizzes, you make fewer mistakes because yeah. the solutions clearly point that out. So yeah, so so that's I mean I'm I'm really really glad. So so hi, uh, when you gave your first attempt, was was seven forty your score? I mean, was were you aiming for the score? No, <laughs> as I say that um, actually my my goal when I first start the Jiman journey is seven hundred plus, okay. and uh, but coming to the exam that I know that if I this is a good day maybe I could score six seventy or six eighty. Mm -hmm. So in the first attempt. So yeah, for the first one. For, um, the, first for, one. for the second. Uh, yeah, the first one. Yeah. I'm thinking. I was thinking about six seventy or six eighty. Yes. Uh, yeah. So then, when you move from the first attempt to the second attempt in your mock test, were you scoring around seven thirty, seven fifty, or so? I mean, were you expecting a seven forty? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, uh, to be honest, I expect seven seven hundred only. I expect seven hundred so only. The day before. Yeah, the the day before the exam, so um, uh, my wife chatted with me, and she asked me, "So, honey, uh, what you aim for?" I say, oh, "I wish I could score seven twenty. Mm -hmm. I just wish, but I know that hmm, I, I know myself. It's hard, but I wish I only wish I could score seven twenty. And she say, "Are you kidding? That's so high. <laughs> you should really think about it." <laughs> okay. So, so what happened when you told her you scored a seven forty? She didn't believe it. She 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 thought she thought that I'm lying. Okay. When I call her, you know, when I call her, like, um, I was so emotional. To be honest, I was so emotional with the with the score, and I told her, like, hey, look, I got seven forty, and she said, no, tell me the truth. You're lying. Tell me the truth. And uh, I said, no, no, honey, that's seven <laughs> forty. Okay. Yeah. Well, I am. I so still, I still remember. So, 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 thank you. So, it, it's a good transition to talk about the schools that you are targeting right now. So, I think that that's really, really, it's probably the yeah. right time. So, so, uh, you are now aiming for you know M seven schools. You're aiming, you're trying to apply to Stanford, Harvard, and other schools, right? So, so um, before and when you were preparing for your first attempt, what which were your target schools then, or did you have a, <laughs> these as target schools? Uh, okay. Um. So. Uh, when I first, uh, the very first, I thought I'm gonna, I have to, uh, I wish I could attend a top 10 program. Mm -hmm. But then after my first attempt at the GMART, <laughs> I thought that, okay, any school in top 20 is fine. Okay. Okay. And, um, but then um, after the second attempt, uh, the, the real score, that it would back my confidence. And um, at first, uh, I think I I am for schools like um, Kenan Fleckler, mm -hmm. UNC, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, uh, UNC, and uh, you know some school in that range. Mm -hmm. uh, but now um, I I try to, I'm trying to aim high a little bit. <laughs> good, good. I am glad. So. Um... So, so let's talk about what you want to do. And I think it's, there's one other question before I have before we go, go to the schools. So you, you, you work on oil platforms. You're an oil and gas professional, right? You, you have to go offshore. And, and, uh, yeah. and, and, and you guys have long shifts, right? So you, you work for, what, 10 hours and then you're 12 hours, right? Yeah, 12 hours. You have 12-hour shifts. Yeah. So and, and, and for how long are you on a platform? Uh, it varies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a week, sometimes two weeks, sometimes three weeks. Okay. It depends because uh, my company is a service company. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Baker Hughes is a service company. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. 
So, so tell me one thing, when you are on a platform, do you still study? Uh, yeah, I, um, uh, when my shift is up, I, I study and, okay. um, but actually those, um, I think, um, I have to took, um, the days off, I think in three months okay. during the, before the exam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. to, you know, 200% on it. No, I, I understand. I think the, the thing that I want to make sure is, so you, regardless of whether you're working or whether you're onshore, not working, <laughs> you made sure that you were consistently studying. Even if it's a few actually, um, yeah, actually, when I when I was offshore, I had more time to study. To be honest, because your wife wasn't there. Yes, and I was not distracted by yep. by hundred things. I know. I, that's that's actually another piece. That's interesting. Yes. Okay. That's, yeah. I had not thought about that. Uh, usually, life on a platform is very regimented, as from what I understand. <laughs> So um, uh, I've actually visited, I've lived on, a, I've just visited an oil tanker, not just 10 years back. Their life is very regimented overall, but um, okay. Let's talk about your future plan. So you want to be a technology product manager, right? Yeah, I, I'm thinking about e-commerce or tech industry. Think about working at Amazon or Cisco or Google as a product manager. Yeah. That's what you want yeah, to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, 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 uh, uh, your background is not in technology per se today, right? No. So that's hard. <laughs> yes. I know. Okay. Okay. But I mean, it's not hard. It's just, I think it's important to know what you need to, to really overcome and, and, and work towards it. Um, just as an example, yeah. I wanted to be in, in marketing. And my background was I had a, a, a dual, I had a master's degree in technology before I'd started my MBA and I was a hardcore geek researcher. So, so absolutely nothing to do with marketing. It, and it's important to know that so that uh, during your MBA, you can focus on making that transition, which is very important okay. to really say, Hey, I come from a background, which has nothing to do with marketing. I want to go into marketing. So, so I need to really make sure I do the right internships, take the right courses, uh, attend competitions and, and hopefully win them. So, 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 so it's, it's important to really create that path, but let's talk about the schools. So when you look at technology, right. And, and, and schools. So the, um, the couple of, I mean, MIT is a really great school in technology and, 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 and you know, in marketing and you're applying to that, that's among one of the M7 schools. Uh, um, but I think uh, if you look at Haas, if you look at UCLA, Anderson, okay, those are really good. I mean, Anderson is a really good school in marketing and technology. Okay. So, so definitely take a look at that. They have some amazing programs overall. So, uh, okay. okay. Kellogg's good in marketing, but it's, they're good in marketing overall. Okay, so so I mean, okay. definitely, if you want to become product manager, a product manager, and uh, uh, sorry, UCL is also really good in product management, essentially. So Anderson School of Business. Um, similarly, Kellogg, Kellogg is decent, but I mean, I would really say if product management is your focus per se, uh, GSB Chicago may not be the best fit. Uh, sorry, what is the the best fit? What are you saying? I'm saying uh, GSP Chicago might not be the best school for you if you want to become a product manager. So there Chicago. are, so, 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 I mean, the kind of focus that UCLA Anderson has, the kind of focus that, uh, 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 that you'd find at MIT and, and Haas, you may not find the same kind of focus and the same kind of peer group, frankly, uh, uh, at, at, uh, at, at, at UCLA, at, at GSP Chicago for example. Um, and, and, and again, the same Stanford, I think is a great place, but similarly, Harvard may not be as good of it in the same way. And again, the difference really is, so there is, when you think about a school, there is the education piece, right? Which I mean, any top school, any school in the top 20 will provide great education. Okay. But there is also the, what your, what your classmates are doing, the peer group piece. Okay. So for example, when I went to Babson, right, 
every third guy was opening a business or, st- or talking about really running a business. So people either wanted to start their own businesses or they came from a family business background where they wanted to grow their businesses. Mm-hmm. So every, so people weren't talking, you know, uh, and, and whereas when you go to Tuck, for example, a lot of people are thinking about consulting. So the discussions that you have, the contacts that you make at these okay. two places are very different. Ah, I see. Okay. When you go to Babson, people are really saying, how the hell do I get to this business plan competition? I'm going to start. This is my idea. They're pitching their business ideas to you and, and, and all of that. When you go to Tuck, people are talking about how should you really win a case competition and, 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 and how do you prepare for a case? It's a very, very different focus overall and, and I think that's where there is that that you know the, the quality of professors piece which I think is great in every school but there is also this what what the students are trying to do over their piece over there which I think if you look at a school such as Anderson if you look at uh, Sloan if you look at uh, um, at, at Berkeley um, Stanford a lot more technology focus overall so, I mean, uh, may I have a question in that yes uh, so in order, I, I mean, like, that's really interesting when you talk about the peers and, you know, their daily talk about, mm. and so how you would, how we would know, I mean, how I would know more about that, like through informational interview or because, you so know, like, there, there, is, there are two ways to do that. One is you, and, and I think uh, one is you can do research on the schools. Okay. So a lot of what peers are doing. So the classmates are doing shows up in the kind of clubs that they have and the kind of participation in clubs. Okay. So uh, if you, and and then again, you have to really always weigh this with the, with the size of the school. So for example, if you go to Harvard, uh, Harvard will have technology clubs. Okay. But Harvard Harvard is a huge program. I mean, the class size is what, eight, 900 people. So, of course, they'll have some people who would do that, but as a huge proportion of the class, who do they want to become product managers? No, they don't want to go into tech, you know, uh, tech product management per se. Okay, uh, but but so first is do secondary research on the sites, on, on school websites where you're going to see clubs. You're going to see every school has centers of excellence, right? Those will really tell you if you go inside the centers of excellence how much recent activity is happening over there. That's going to kind of give you an idea. Okay. Um, The school will talk about where people are going, what positions people are going in. For example, if you go to Tuck, you're going to really find a third of the class goes in consulting. They don't become product managers, they become consultants. Right. Whereas if you go to UCLA Anderson, you're going to really see a very, very different class profile where, where they're getting employed. So uh, another thing where I think you can use this to your advantage, and I know being in Asia ranking is a huge thing, but in America, location is a big thing. So, so uh, if you want to go towards, want to go towards technology, look at hubs. So uh, when you think about technology and the hubs, there are three or four locations, which are really big, five locations actually, which are big hubs in technology. You have uh, your San Francisco, the Bay Area, right? You have the Washington State area, and you haven't chosen any school in Washington State. You have uh, uh, Amazon over there. You have Microsoft over there. You have a couple of really decent-sized startups over there. Uh, when I say decent-sized, you know, unicorns essentially, uh, also from 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 the Washington State. Then you have the New York area, where you have a lot of startups coming up. You have the Boston area, which is a very decent technology hub as well. And, and then you have Northern Texas, where you have uh, uh, you know, um, uh, a lot of technology companies too. Right? Texas? So you're Northern Texas, not Houston, but, but Northern Texas, uh, San, Antonio, San Antonio, and then all of those places. Uh, okay, so, so look at schools around these areas. Because if technology companies are coming around from those places, they hire locally. A lot of them hire locally uh, for positions of product managers. So, so that's the, the other piece that I would really look at. Because ultimately, 
it's it's where people go post your mba that's the other piece mm. that that i would look at the benefit of this approach is you're going to get schools that can help you in a much better way i mean any top school will help you become a product manager but if you're applying to let's say a harvard and say i want to become a product manager per se uh, unless and until you have a stellar background your chances of becoming accepted uh, uh, are are lower but if you go if you really research the school well you apply to the school uh, to these schools um uh, there your chances of acceptance are higher because there's a a fit overall the second thing is with a 740 right your chances of getting a scholarship are higher okay i recently interviewed a girl who had a 740 her name was uh, i think i don't know if she was from korea or, or vietnam but but uh, she had a 740 she got uh, in her fifth attempt and she got a $80,000 fellowship from georgetown university georgetown yes and exactly. and and, um, and she got an admit from kellogg as well and um, okay. and and so i think one of the other benefits is that that and maybe if you apply to ucla which i think is a better fit for you than many other schools you will get a scholarship and you'll get to go, go to a place where which will take you to where you want to be so and 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 the other piece is once you shortlist schools you can always contact students over there okay so uh, another thing that i did and i don't know how much uh, how much time you have but when i was applying to business schools i looked up professors i looked up the research that they were doing and and are they doing research in the areas where uh, where where i want to be in so one of the areas that i was very fascinated with in addition to marketing was the value of research and development and in 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 defining the company's revenue stream i mean how much r and d you put in and what what revenue growth impact does it have okay and and uh, there were a couple of professors who at at gsb chicago who had done some fascinating work in that space and i wrote to them and and i really said hey you guys have done this here is what i'm experiencing i was working for nokia at that i worked for nokia at that time uh, with regards to r and d in and its impact in projects and 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 some of this is consistent others other things i don't think uh, what is your opinion of it now those guys wrote back they didn't really spend a lot of time but the fact is they wrote back they acknowledged and that's one of the reasons i think that helped me get an admission into gsp chicago now i didn't attend this because i got a full fellowship from babson and i really liked that school and i, I liked studying for free but uh, that's it that's why yes yeah you you graduate with no debt in fact i i graduated and 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 uh, three days after i graduated i bought a house in us so so versus a lot of my my colleagues were were thinking about paying off their student loans i was actually okay. able to work during my mba and save enough money to buy a house Oh, okay so that's um, nice so 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 yeah i mean it's 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 again do that research um, okay uh, i have i have a a question i actually haven't seek any professional advice so i don't know if you could have help me to have some input about it so um, i actually um leaving my company uh, my current company the becky huge mm -hmm. uh i already submitted the resignation letter Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty much, I will uh, leave the company in um, mid of November, mm -hmm. and then I. Um, so uh, when I come to think about um, product manager, so I know that I didn't have the prior experience, so that's going to be difficult for me to land at least an internship, you know, um, in the summer. Um, so that's why um, starting from you know November, I I'm thinking about joining an. commerce company in vietnam and uh, you know try idea. to even do some junior position i know that uh, and even in paid uh, i just want to get an exposure i'll tell you what and, i uh, did yeah. i will tell you what i i had the same problem okay and i was not as smart as you are and i had this limitation i was working in germany before my mba so i could not leave my job because my visa was sponsored by nokia right okay but so when i went to babson i wanted to do my internship in marketing and uh, 
and and I wrote close to 90 cover letters and no one would give me an internship in marketing. Exact same problem that you are really saying. Okay. Yeah. So I got a paid internship with EMC in IT and process. Okay. Okay. And they were paying me very well. Okay. That's good. <laughs> uh, so, so, but then I said, okay, because they're paying me really well and, and the work there was about six hours a day. So I still had four hours a day left, four to five hours a day left with me. I took a second internship with a startup in marketing and, 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 and okay. it was free of charge and they really made me director of marketing for three months. Okay. And I got some amazing insights for them. Okay. Okay. This was a, a music aggregator company. It was a startup and, and, and essentially it got sold ultimately, but I got this internship for three months. And what this did for me was that uh, because of the interesting things that I did during those three months, when I applied for my next internship. So during my second year, I did four more internships in lieu of credits. Okay. And, and you could do that. And then, which is where I made a lot of money to, to be able to buy a house as soon as I graduated. So, uh, mm-hmm. so when I went for my second internship, I had stories to tell for my first, for my first internship and I had results to really show. So, so that helped me get my second internship. So one, then I got to my third internship. So my first, second, third, fourth, fifth internship were all in marketing. My primary paying internship was, was an IT and process, but the money that it gave me allowed me to do this. Now you're doing something which is even more, which is even better where, where you are really doing that right now, where you're going towards, you're going into a junior position and, and you're really saying, I'm going to get exp- the relevant experience which I think is great because, and then you should really, if you have a job in that, you should write that in your essays as well. It's a really great thing. So, so, so you're doing really good, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, what's the right word? I'm motivated by what you're doing, frankly. And I respect (laughs) what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to have some encouragement from you. And um, because um, I know that it's gonna be, you know, a you know a tough path ahead. But um, I try to get my heads up and uh, you know um, do do my best <laughs> uh, that I could. That See, I that's could do. when the fun is. I remember when I was working at Honeywell. I remember my first purchase order, which was a hundred thousand dollars. It actually was that oil tanker that I was talking about. That was the first purchase order that I ever got. I mean, I got millions of dollars after that, but, but essentially that's the one that I remember. At, at EGMAT, we have about 25,000 customers right now. I remember the first customer. I remember the 50th customer. I remember the 500th customer. Okay. So, I mean, and those are times of struggle. And, and I mean, it's still hard work right now, but it's not the same kind of struggle that I did was there. So you will remember this time and you will cherish this time for your entire life. So, so, so. Okay. I mean, if we don't, if we don't push ourselves, we don't grow. If we don't stretch ourselves. That's true. That's true. Right? That's true. Thank you for pointing out that. That's my philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I always feel that when, when we facing something so difficult, that means that we're growing. That's my philosophy. Yes. Yeah. So it was really good talking to you. Um, and, and I think good luck. You're doing all the right things. Uh, I think we do. Don't just be swayed by rankings is what I would say. Keep, be focused on what you want to achieve. Don't be shy with regards to talking to people and even talking to professors and talking to admission officers. I think you have a good score, be good background and, and you're willing to do the right things. So, and, and that kind of shows up in your actions. So I think you, you're in a really good place. Okay, thank you. I uh, just want to share some good news. Uh, I just got uh, a couple of hours ago. I think thanks to my Jima score, I just got the invitation interview, 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 uh, interview invitation from uh, Mokoms. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Congratulations. <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That is so, really, uh, really good. Yeah, I hope I could make it. <laughs> yeah, just just prepare for your interview now. Be diligent and, and okay. ready. Yeah, and, I will. I will. And mention this this change that you are doing right now. It's it's a very big thing, frankly. 
It shows that level of thought process, the fact that you're planning for the future. Okay. okay. I will. So I will. good luck for that interview. Let me know how it goes. Of uh, course, right. <laughs> oh, um, and, and, the, and the e-book, um, the e-book about uh, application. Yes. That's really, really helpful. Yes. That's really helpful. I use the same book. I use the same book actually. I still have it over there. Really? Yes. I. I it is, it's that older okay. book, and it's still relevant. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. I'm glad. All right. Bye bye, and good luck. Okay. Thank you, Rajas, for for the talk. It's really, really uh, fun, interesting. Hi. I guess your internet connection finally gave up on, uh, uh, on, on the platform. All right. For my friends who want to take into the Jumat journey. All right. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.